Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Kind of like Sister Sandra. Uh, so I'm her saying, you get caught up in the spirit and move on. Where did I go from when she sang that song? Everybody get caught up in the spirit. Uh, let's move on with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like when she testified about she got up this morning and she didn't have any pain in her body. Praise God. Yeah. That shows that we serve an awesome God. Yeah. A God of salvation. A God of deliverance. Yeah. A God of healing. Yeah. A God that takes care of His people. Yeah. That's been born again. Yeah. Washed in the blood. Yeah. Filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah. With the evidence of speaking in tongues and the Spirit of God gets uttered. God takes care of those that love Him. That serve Him. And worship Him. Yeah. And give Him praise and glory and honor. Because He's worthy yeah. of everything that we say and do for yeah. Him. Yeah. Amen. Amen or amen. 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 And it's all amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. I love the Lord tonight. And yeah. I was thinking about when she was testifying she didn't have any pain. And yesterday, I was out in the man cave. And I was praying, praying. I spent the most day out there praying, praying. And I went in the house and sat down in the chair. And all of a sudden, I couldn't hardly breathe. I couldn't hardly move. I couldn't get up. My back was hurting. My kidneys was hurting. My legs was hurting. I was hurting all the way around. I couldn't hardly breathe. And I thought, man, I'm going to have to call Brother Mark sure, Mark sure it's horrible. You know, I, I sure didn't want to. You know, but I thought I was going to have to. And finally, I called my wife. I said, you're going to have to help get me up. So she came over there with both hands and helped pull me up out of the chair. All right. I got a drink of the soda and went to the restroom and went back and sat out. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the anointing came. Thank you. And I mean, from the top of my head yeah. to the soles of my feet. And it stayed on me and stayed on me and stayed on me and just kept staying on me. And it stayed on me for about an hour and a half or two hours. And all of a sudden, she started to shut the door down. I said, you can't. I got to go out and get us a soda. Give me one and her one out the man cave. So I jumped up out of that chair. Thank you. I run out the door and got the soda and I run back in the house and locked the door down. And I was over there at the refrigerator getting ice. Yes. And I got my ice and I walked around. Thank you, Sat over there and popped soda open. I was pouring it in the ice and it dawned on me. Thank you. This is how God works. It <laughs> dawns on me. I said, turn around and I looked at my wife and I said, guess what? What's that? I said, I jumped up out of the chair and run out to the shed and got the soda and run back in the house and got ice, come over here and pour it. I said, I have no pain. I have no pain. God touched it through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God touched my body and I have no pain. That's what kind of God we serve. A God that He'll deliver you and heal you. And you won't even realize it. And the job and then I said, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I thank you that you touched my body and I'm able to get up and down. Yes. Amen. I'm able to be here today. Because God touched me and healed me. Praise Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I love the Lord. for what, he, what, love, what I love the most about Him is when He surprises you. Yes. When He does something for you and you don't even realize He's done it until all of a sudden you think, thank you. Mm, I have no pain. He's done it and didn't even tell me. He didn't have to tell me. He just let me figure it out on my own. Have you ever had to figure out stuff on your own? I had to figure that one out on my own. And he didn't tell me a word. He never said I touched you or nothing. I just went to thank him and praise him. Amen. 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 I'm going to try not to tarry too long tonight. I told a sister back there, she said, what are you going to preach? And I said, the sort of scripture in the Bible. She said, what's that? Jesus wept. And I said, I'm just going to hand it to that. <laughs> That's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> he would have fainted if I said Jesus wet and handed to him. But I'm sorry if I feel the other preacher did. He <laughs> didn't get shaky. He's out of that. He's out the door like a bullet. I said, well. <laughs> hey man, if you got your Bibles tonight, turn with me for a few moments. I don't know how this is going to go, but I want God to have his way. Amen. To the third chapter of Matthew. Lord, 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 Lord. Kevin, pray over this. Lord Jesus, Lord, and to you, Lord, is bless the world, Lord, bless the world, bless, bless the souls, Lord, in your name, Lord, in your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
third chapter. Hmm. This is about John the Baptist. He was a forerunner for Jesus Christ. Amen. You can be seated. I didn't mean to keep standing. He was a forerunner for Christ, for Jesus. And as I was reading this, I was thinking. And I was, I've been watching all of this stuff on, on TV, you know, about the news. And all the things that are going on. All kinds of bad things that's going on all the way around us. And you used to think, well, it's real far off. It ain't going to affect us. Have nothing to do with us. But as you watch, now it's in our backyard. It does affect us. All of the sin and all of the wickedness and all of the ungodliness and all of the murder. Children running crazy. Children killing children. Babies having babies. Parents don't know where their kids at. Parents won't take care of their kids. I know there's none of them in here. We all love our kids and take care of them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But you find them out there. Yes. Kids that don't have homes. Parents is never home. Amen? Yes. And it's in our backyard. And I was thinking about this as I was reading it. And I thought, you know, Brother Mark and Brother Shannon and Kenny and Kevin and Sandra and me and all of you in here. We're a forerunner for Jesus Christ. We're the forerunner. We're to carry this gospel to a lost and dying world. And we're supposed to carry it. We're like a John the Baptist in the wilderness. And there's different kinds of wilderness. There's a wilderness that you can go camp in and go hiking in and everything else. But he was talking about in the wilderness of the people. There's a wilderness of the people. They don't know a thing about God. And you got scoffers and mockers. They'll come out to see what you're doing and watch what you're doing, but they'll never do anything. They won't repent of their sins. They won't turn away from their wicked ways. They, they want to stand around and watch and be like what some people call hypocrites, criticize and everything. Amen? They do this. They even come to church and watch and hear what you have to say. But try to get one to the altar. Get one to come and all and pray through to God and get saved and baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Get baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And the Word of God says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Right. Hmm. What I want to ask tonight, how many is walking the straight path tonight? How many is walking in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and in the Word of God? How many tonight is obeying the Word of God, the Scriptures of God? How many tonight is keeping their path straight? How many tonight is sitting in the house of the Lord? And I know we're all here and we've all been serving the Lord for a long time. Some longer than others. I've been at it for 40 years or a little more. And I haven't been perfect. I stumbled and fell. God's come along and picked me back up. Raised me back up. Kept his hands on me. But I made one thing sure. That I stayed in the house of God. For one reason I want to make my election sure. I want to make sure I make it. As Sandra sang that song, I wanted to hear it. And I knew she could sing it. She might stumble a little bit, but she got through it, and I loved every minute of it. And when she was singing it, the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost just fell on me. Because I was thinking today when I was praying, I've got to make it. I've got to make it. Every one of us in here tonight has got to make it. We don't have any other choice because we've come too far now with God to turn back. To go back out in that world and start sinning and live the life that we lived before we came to God. We came too far and we've got to make it. And we've got to make our election sure tonight. And do it in Jesus Christ. He said, be ye holy for I'm holy. And I keep telling my wife, I don't know about me being holy. I'm a righteous man. But I don't think I'm so holy. But he said, strive to be. Did he not? Strive to be holy. And I do, but I fail. Brother Mark, I, I miss the mark. I'm a righteous man. God tells me, don't tell me you're a righteous man. And I've had people say, holy man. Holy man of God. And I thought, man, unless he's got to be talking to the wrong one. 
Because I don't consider myself a holy man. I consider myself a righteous man. Thank you. Now, I'm going to tell you what. you got to be walking close to God to call yourself a holy man. God was holy. Jesus is holy. Don is kind of fleshly. You know, I still stumble and fall. I take three or four steps and fall down. Somebody's got to help me up. Amen. Mm. So anyway, we're supposed to be the forerunner for Jesus Christ. We're supposed to carry this gospel. We're supposed to testify and witness to people. We're supposed to try to get people to come to church and get saved, delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost. How many churches? And I'm not running down churches or pastors or anything like that. But you've been there. I've been in churches where you sat through a message and there was not a thing there. No power, no anointing. And a scripture came to me today. I was thinking about it. And he said, they were building up kingdoms here on earth. Big, giant kingdoms. Here on earth. And they wasn't laying up treasures in heaven. Worship you. Because the word of God says, where your treasures is, your heart will be also. Thank you. And neither can rust or moth or thieves enter in, steal and corrupt. But lay up treasures in heaven where your heart will be. Yes. So I want to lay up treasures. Thank you. I don't have a lot here on earth. But I want a lot when I get to heaven. I want to lay my treasures up there. Because if it's up there, then when it comes my time to go, when I come to die, as the song has said, when I come to die, I'll have no fear because my treasures are there. My treasures are in Jesus Christ. My hope, the hope of glory. Amen? Mm. I don't know how this is going to get over. God lead me. And the same John the Baptist, John, had his raiment of camel hair and a leather girdle about his horns, and his feet was locusts and wild honey. Locusts. That's not one of them things. <laughs> when I was young, ignorant, and didn't know any better, I was out in California for years and years, and thought I was going to make my home out there. Mm -hmm. They first came out, they came out with fried chocolate grasshoppers and stuff like that. And I, yeah. I kind of, when they offered me more, I shook my, turned my nose up and said, mm hmm, I know where the restaurant is. <laughs> then finally I got the nerve and I tried a grasshopper. And they had burning so good and coated it in chocolate so good that you know you don't taste the grasshopper, you can't taste the chocolate. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and I thank God that I taste the chocolate. And then they fed me a spider, and I said, I hope that spider's like that grasshopper. <laughs> so I tried that. You know how you are when you're young and ignorant and you're not saved? <laughs> You'll try anything just to prove you're macho. <laughs> Man, and these grasshoppers and spiders and worms and stuff ain't too macho to me. <laughs> a little bit goofy. I haven't done that since, brother. <laughs> I learned better. They got better things done at Hardee's and McDonald's and all the restaurants to eat. And I told my wife, I said, there's no way that I'd ever starve to death on the planet here because there's too much game. I don't know how to hunt, fish, and do everything else. I'd never go hungry. You know? And since I've already eaten grasshoppers and spiders and worms, if I had to, I guess I could do it, but I sure wouldn't want to. What if that thing came alive and was crawling around in your belly? That'd be rough, wouldn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Locusts and wild honey then went out to him, Jerusalem and all of Judea, and all of the regions around and about Jordan, and was baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruit, me, for your repentance. We need to bring forth something. We need to be about the Father's business. We need to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to get people saved. We need to get them baptized in Jesus' name that we need to get them through to the Holy Ghost. And then when they start speaking in tongues, somebody needs to discern that thing and make sure they got the Holy Ghost that the devil didn't enter in and deceive them. 
used to when I was working with the pastor. Every time a new convert, and I was bad about this, every time a new convert got filled with the Holy Ghost, my first words out of my mouth, I said, God, I want to know that I know that I know that it got the Holy Ghost. So let it bring forth the message and let so-and-so interpret it. I wanted to know that it was real. I wanted to make sure that devil wasn't standing there and got there. And buddy, about a minute or so, here come a message. Sister so-and-so would interpret that. And I said, thank you, Lord. I know it's real. You sang that song. I know it's real. It's real. It's real. I can feel it in my soul. Amen. Amen. You got to make sure these kids are getting the real thing. There's so much evil in this world. Satan goes to church just the same as we did. He's here. And, he's, and you know what the sad thing is? He's, he's more faithful than some of the saints of God is. Amen or oh man. Heaven, I've seen kids, I hate to say it, I've seen kids get saved and get baptized and pray to the Holy Ghost and all of a sudden start speaking in tongues and it wasn't the Spirit of God. You can feel the coldness coming, brother. You can tell when it's not God. There's a death, a coldness that comes over them. So we got to make sure when our children get saved and get baptized and they're seeking for the Holy Ghost, you got to make sure they got the real thing. People just say, well, they spoke in tongues. They got it. Not necessarily. Worship you. Worship you. Maybe about you. I don't see anybody getting this. I ain't getting no Bring forth therefore fruit, meat for your repentance. Do something. And think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our fathers, for I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children into Abraham. God is able. If we don't cry out and worship God and praise Him, He'll cause the rocks to cry out. I don't want no rocks stealing my praise and glory to God. I want to worship and praise God. Sister Sandra was singing that song and I was worshiping and praising God and anointing fell and it's still on me. Man, is it on me. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is all over me. It's been on me for two or three days and I don't even know why. But God's had mercy on me. For one thing, I didn't really want to come and preach. So God had to keep me anointing so I'd come down here and do it. Amen? Sometimes God just got to lay it on you. A couple of times I thought about just telling Brother Mark, I just don't feel like it. I don't have the words. And I didn't get by with that either. And he told me when he when I left Sunday afternoon, I said, Well, I'll call you. He said, Don't call me. <laughs> For God's sakes, don't call me. Just do it. I love you, Brother Phillips. I love you too. <laughs> I do love you. <laughs> And now the axe is laid into the root of the tree and every tree. Therefore that every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Thanks to God. We better make sure that when we bring forth something that is good. And it's of God. Because if it ain't of God, as the word of God just said, it'll be hewn down. And cast into the fire. And I don't want to be cast into the fire. I want to be that tree that's bringing forth good fruit. Not corrupt fruit, but good fruit. As the Word of God says that, there have been a lot of people in the last days said, Lord, Lord. And everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is not entered into the kingdom of God. God, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name? Have we not done mighty, many wonderful works in thy name? Then will I profess, he said. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never know you. He don't know. Oh yeah, they're doing all these things. You don't have to be saved to carry the gospel. There's a lot of preachers out there that's carrying the gospel and don't have a thing, but they're building up kingdoms here on earth like they're going to live here forever. And they're not. They can't take it with them when they're gone. We got, I, well, there was a thing on TV the other day about this televangelist. Man, he's got 
He owns an airport. He's got jumbo planes. He's got three or four airplanes. He's got a condominium and never state me. <laughs> but he don't have nothing. I've heard him preaching. It's nothing. It's dead. Have you ever heard preachers on television preaching it's nothing but dead? Then you hear one that come on there, a little guy that ain't got hardly anything, but he's on television and he's full of fire. Full of the Holy Ghost and it just reaches you. Reach out and touch you. There's a lot of people carrying the gospel. And a lot of them don't have anything. That's why God said be careful and know them. Worship you. Know them that they labor amongst you and know them well, whether they be of God or they not be of God. I want to know the one that's preaching to me. Amen. I've been here long enough now. I know him pretty good. And I believe he's preaching me the word. Or I wouldn't stay. I'd have took off. Amen or on me. You either do it or you ready. And I'm one of these kinds. I'll tell you. I don't have a spirit of bashfulness. I don't have a spirit of cowardice. If you're carrying it, you're carrying it. If you ain't, you ain't. Thank you, Lord. Or you isn't. I should have been, I should have been more proper. I isn't. <laughs> Excuse me. You making fun of me? <laughs> I am me. Baptize you with water and turn it to But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Who shoes? His shoes. I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. Yeah. Whose fan is in his hands, and he will thoroughly purge the floor and gather the wheat into his garden. But he will. This is what I like. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Yes. You get that Holy Ghost and fire shut up in your bones, as I tell them all the time. It's all over me and keeping me alive. It is shut up in my bones. And it is shut up in my bones. And it does keep me alive. There's a few times that I thought I was going to die. And I, I even asked God, I said, God, still let me suffer, Lord. Have mercy on me and take me right now. <clears throat> Just take me. I wasn't afraid to go. The fact is, I told my wife, I said, I'm ready. I'm ready, and it's a time when I told her I was ready, I was ready. I knew I was ready. Thank you, Lord. If God knocked on your door tonight, Thank you. said it's your time, would you be ready? I'm asking you a question tonight. How many in here, you don't have to raise your hands, but how many tonight if God knocked on your door? How many tonight, if God said, come and go with me, you'd be ready to go and willing to go? Amen or oh me. I told God today, I said, as far as I know, God, I'm ready. But if I'm not, get me there. Whatever it takes, God, to get me there, I want to be there. Get me there. I have a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. I want to shun hell. I want to shun the things of hell. I don't want to be cast into the lake of fire and burn throughout eternity. And you know what? That fire that's there ain't like the fire we know here on earth. It's a different kind of fire. It's a fire that burns but never consumes. Just like the bush. It was on fire but the bush was not consumed. That's the way it's going to be in hell. We're going to be in torment. And that fire is not going to consume your soul or your body. Flesh and blood can't enter in, but flesh and bone can. Amen or oh me. I hope this is good. I don't feel like I'm doing such a good job. I ain't getting no way in Jesus. Amen. Unquenchable fire. Burn up the chat with unquenchable fire. I want to go to another place for a few moments. I want to go to Matthew 7 and 19. Then I'll come back to where I was at. Matthew 7 and 19. It said, Every tree that bringeth forth not good to you, 
fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit, you shall know them. Brother, by my fruit, you shall know me. By, my, by your fruit, I shall know you. Whether you're for real, or you're like a, instead of being a, a bull over a watch, you're an old cheap time ex that takes a licking and keep on ticking. Amen? Amen? By their fruit, you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, right. and in thy name have cast out devils, right. and in thy name done many wonderful works, right. and then will I profess, unto them. I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken to him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not. Can I ask a question? Are we building our house upon the rock? And that rock, Jesus Christ? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's our solid rock. We don't have a rock. If it ain't Jesus Christ, it ain't real. There's many gospels going forth today, but they're not of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is that rock. And I pray to God that I'm building my house upon that solid rock. Jesus Christ is my rock. And without him, I have no hope. I have no hope of eternal life. Without him, I have no salvation, no deliverance, no healing. No Holy Ghost. Right. I gotta have him. Without him, we don't have anything. You might have riches here on earth. <clears throat> Fine houses and Cadillacs and everything there is to drive. But if you don't have Jesus, Amen. you don't have anything. Right. All of this stuff you've got and gained means absolutely nothing. The only thing that means anything to me or to you or anybody in this congregation you all confess to be saved. The only thing that should mean anything to us is Jesus Christ and Him crucified in us. Holy on the hell of all of Jesus and Him crucified in us. Thank you, Lord. 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 Okay. <sighs> Upon the rock. And everyone that heareth my sayings of my mine and doeth them, not shall be like unto a man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. Saints of God, if it's not built on Jesus Christ, upon the solid rock, it's not going to stand. It won't stand the test of time. <laughs> everything we do, and everything we say in Jesus Christ has got to be built upon the rock, because if it's built upon the sand, it's shaky, and it'll fall. There'll be nothing to it. It won't last. It won't endure throughout the ages. And we've got to endure throughout the ages. We're going to be with Him. And we're going to be with Him throughout the ages. Oh, Lord. And I want to be there. So I'm not trying to build my house upon the sand. I'm trying to build it upon the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. And I love Him.
Hmm. Amen or oh me. I don't want to. I've seen people that come into the house of the Lord and get, they say they got saved, they got delivered, they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they got baptized in His name. And then in a few weeks or a month,